Hey guys, probably the most common question that I get asked is what microphone should I buy? And there are a lot of different options out there and a lot of variables. So I wanted to go over some standard microphones and why they're used to help narrow down some options and give you a better idea of what to look for in a microphone. A few things before we get started. First, when it comes to the sub $50 range of microphones, pretty much everything out there is about the same level of quality, so I'm not going to touch too much on that because no matter what you buy, you'll generally get pretty similar results. Second, there's a really good case to be made for renting microphones when you need them rather than buying gear outright, especially if you're a filmmaker or if you're working in sort of a schedule-driven environment where you only need the mic for a certain period of time. There are a lot of great rental places that you can get really high-quality stuff from for lower prices than just buying something. And I would highly encourage renting a really high quality microphone over buying a low quality microphone that's gonna cause more problems in post-production than it solves. However, if you're working in a relatively controlled or a predictable environment like a home studio, or even if you're just vlogging from your living room or your car, you can definitely get great sound quality without having to empty your life savings into a single microphone. When it comes to vlogging or doing any kind of filmmaking with a DSLR, there really aren't many players in that game when it comes to mics, but fortunately Rode actually makes some really good stuff. I know a lot of people are already familiar with their video mic series, but they're actually really great mics in comparison to everything else that's out there. Each one of those microphones is really portable. It sits right on top of a DSLR, mounts to a hot shoe, and plugs straight into the camera so you don't have to deal with a bunch of external gear and preamps and recorders and all that. They sound good. They're relatively low cost in comparison to a little bit more professional microphones, and they offer a lineup for pretty much any budget. You have the Video Mic Go, which is a really good entry into above the quality of onboard camera microphones phones, and the video mic standard, which adds wind protection and a roll-off filter, so you can kind of filter out a lot of wind buffeting noise down on the lower frequencies that you wouldn't necessarily need anyway. The video mic Pro and Pro Plus add higher quality components, so they're going to sound a little bit better than the others, and again, you've got that built-in wind protection, plus a little bit more control over gain. You have the video mic Pro Plus with a plus 20 or a minus 10 pad on it, plus the roll-off filter. And their latest entry, the Rode video mic NTG, adds a little bit more of a directional pickup pattern and is a little more of an approximation of what a true shotgun microphone might pick up and sound like versus the standard sort of on-camera mics that you're used to seeing. Of the bunch, I'd personally recommend the Video Mic Pro Plus or the NTG. I think those are going to get you the closest to pro sound quality, but honestly, all of them are going to be better than onboard camera mics, and they're going to sound pretty good regardless of what you get, so any is a good option. Moving beyond those more self-contained DSLR shooting kind of setups, pretty much every microphone you're going to see is going to require some kind of interface or recorder to attach to, so just keep that in mind. Moving into more the world of voiceover or podcasting or sort of the standard broadcast talk show format where you've got more of a stationary person in front of a camera, for example, the SM7B or the SM58, both from Shure, are great examples of microphones that will get really, really good broadcast voice quality sound out of them without breaking the bank. The SM7B is my personal favorite. It really flatters the voice. It rejects a lot of unwanted sound from the background that you might not want, and if you get it nice and close to whoever's speaking, it'll really accentuate the low end and give you that sort of radio announcer style. The SM58 is a really great lower cost alternative to the SM7B. A lot of the things that make the SM7 really great, the Shure SM58 shares, so that sweetening of vocal frequencies and that little bit of proximity effect that gives you the nice radio voice if you get the microphone close enough, they share a lot of those characteristics. Also, the 58 is exactly the same microphone as the Shure SM57, which is a really great instrument mic. So if you're recording music, it's a really good dual purpose. Additionally, the 58 is super durable. So if you yell a lot or maybe need to use it as a hammer, you can and it won't actually do any damage to the microphone. And best of all, it's about a quarter of the price, so it's a really, really good bang for your buck. A couple things to note with both of them, since they're dynamic microphones, they're actually gonna have a little bit lower output than standard mics, so you'll need to crank the gain up on any preamp you have it plugged into a little bit hotter than you might ordinarily expect. Also, these are microphones that perform best when they're right up against the speaker's face, so if you want something that maybe isn't gonna show up on camera, you're probably gonna wanna look at lavalier mics. Lavaliers are one of the most useful types of microphones out 
there. You can use them in film production to hide within actors or talent's clothing so you can get a much better isolated mic position for their voice. You can use them in sound effects recording to get things like car engines or really, really intimate or delicate or hard to reach places. And if you're doing interviews or even just vlogging, you can get these microphones really well hidden so they don't cause any kind of distraction to the audience. There are a lot of inexpensive lavs out there. And like I said before, if you get down below the $50 mark, pretty much all the sound quality is going to be about the same. So if you see brands like Polson or Asden, it's going to be similar across the board, and I won't go too deep into that. If your content is suited for or might require a lavalier mic, it's definitely better to have one of these than nothing at all, but they definitely leave a little bit room for improvement. Coming in just below the $100 price point is the Deity W Lav, which I admit I have not had a chance to try out yet, but I'm really curious about it because Deity seems to be kind of aiming for that not quite entry level, but not quite mid-grade professional level price point, and if they sound good, that could be a really good option. But not having heard it, I hesitate to recommend it. I'm really curious about it. I think it's something to keep an eye on. I've had some really good experiences with the Countryman B3 Lavs. They're really good with sound effects recording. I think they sound really good on the voice. They're not too expensive and they're really durable. So you can record things with them that I might be a little more afraid to put my fragile mics on. If you're looking for professional quality and more than mid-range price points, Voice Technologies makes an awesome set of microphones called the 500 series that are really, really well suited to capturing the voice and basically being able to withstand a direct nuclear blast. They're really, really well built. Also, they come with all the accessories that you might need to hide these mics on talent, so it's really easy to get mics wired into clothing or hook them onto things that you ordinarily wouldn't be able to fix microphones to very easily. And at the top of the line mark, you'll find the DPA 4061s and Sunken COS 11s. These lavs are really, really excellent in their sound quality. They're both a little bit more fragile than I'd like, especially the DPAs. I've had really, really close encounters with uh, almost cutting cables and ruining microphones, that kind of thing. But sound quality is fantastic with both of these, and they're really small, so you can hide them kind of anywhere or put them in places you wouldn't be able to get a microphone ordinarily, even lav microphones that would be too big for certain spaces. These are both kind of the standard microphones that are used on top-level film productions. They're awesome out of the box. They sound great without having to do anything to them, but they're expensive, and so they'll cost you a little bit more. And speaking of production, when it comes to being in an on-set environment or really anything Thing where you might want to use a microphone on a boom pole to record, you're going to be looking at shotgun microphones. Rode makes some great entry-level shotgun microphones. The NTG4 and the NTG4 Plus are really solid, they're durable, they flatter the right frequencies and voices, and they won't break the bank. There are definitely higher quality microphones out there, but I'd say these plus maybe a used NTG1 or a used NTG2 are kind of like the Honda of microphones. They're durable, they're reliable, they leave a little bit of room for improvement and maybe wanting a little bit more, but overall they're really solid microphones and they're a great starting point. Stepping up into the mid-range, more professional lineup, Rode again has the NTG3, which is a little bit more expensive, uses a little bit higher quality components. It's often called the poor man's 416, which of course that's the standard. Sennheiser 416 was for the longest time used on pretty much every film set there was. It's super durable, it sounds really good, you can throw pretty much anything at it and it's able to take really high sound pressure level audio, as well as inclement weather like rain or heat or cold. Also, the 416 isn't actually a true shotgun microphone. It's got a super cardioid pickup pattern, so it's going to be a little bit more forgiving if you don't have the microphone pointed directly at your talent or directly at the sound source you're trying to record. That wider pickup pattern gives a little bit less directionality and opens up so that the microphone is going to pick up a little more of a wide section of where you're pointing it. That's really great if you're working with a boom operator or maybe you have multiple people in front of the camera that you need to get that directional mic pointed really quickly at each of them. You're going to be able to find a good sweet spot to get them on axis and sounding really good, dynamic, full, and not have to worry about, oh, well, this guy was pointed away from the mic or this you know, mic was pointed this direction instead of the person speaking, so there's not really much we can do. Both of them are similar in price. Personally, I'd recommend springing for the 416 if you can, but the NTG3 is a really great alternative. And then... At the top of the line, there's the Sheps CMIT 5U and the Neumann KM81i. Both of these microphones are incredible. I've had the opportunity to use both and compare both, and they're really forgiving of any of the sounds that you put in front of them. They're, they're directional enough, but easy enough to reject sounds you don't want. They flatter all the right frequencies, so voices sound fantastic. Sound effects are really, really solid. They can roll off a little bit of low end if you need them to, or they can capture the full frequency spectrum to get really deep, bassy sounds if you want. And as soon as your sound source 
course gets outside of the polar pickup pattern, you really get great rejection. You can barely hear a lot of the sounds that are coming in from behind these microphones. These are definitely expensive microphones, but they sound the best out of the box that you can possibly get when it comes to production audio. One thing to note is they're both a little bit more fragile than something like the Sennheiser 416, so if you're operating, you don't necessarily want to put them in extreme high heat or extremely low temperatures or really damp conditions, but outside of that, they're probably the best sounding microphones you can get in this range. Now, obviously there are hundreds of microphones out there, but by choosing one that the pros use or comparing the characteristics of the ones you're looking at to these, you'll be able to narrow down your options to one that's best for you. If you're in the market for a new mic and you want to support my channel, check out my affiliate links below. And of course, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, comment below with any questions you might have. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me there. And as always, thanks for watching.